Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter, The Solid State. The topic of this video is deducing the formula of a compound from and its relationship to the number of voids that are filled. Now that we know about the closed packed structures and we know about unit cells, we know a unit cell has lattice points and there are two types of voids that are created in HCB packing. And these two types of voids are tetra tetrahedral voids and octahedral voids. The knowledge of how these voids are filled up gives us, can help us to deduce the formula of a compound, especially in the case of ionic compounds. Because ionic compounds are nothing but form, the formula of an ionic compound is a formula unit. That is, it is the minimum ratio between the cation and the anion, and multiplication of that ratio gives you the entire crystal lattice for the uh, ionic compound. So if we know, we also know that in a unit cell, the number of atoms that occupy the lattice points, what is the contribution of each atom where it is present. And based on that, it is possible, if you know the composition of the unit cell, it is possible to deduce the formula of the compound. I'll explain this or this will become clearer as I explain this to you. Let us say that there is uh, the cubic arrangement is HCP or CCP that is cubic closed packed or hexagonal closed packed structure. They have tetrahedral voids and octahedral voids. In ionic solids, what is an ionic solid? An ionic solid is a solid that is formed by a cation and an anion. What are cations? Cations are positively charged ions or atoms atoms from which the electrons have been lost and since in order to acquire the octet those atoms lose electrons which have one two or three electrons in their outermost shell and if they shed off if they lose these three electrons they will get uh, the inner the inner shell will be complete or the octet of the inner shell would be complete and they would acquire the noble gas configuration therefore these cations they lose they usually lose the outermost shell and the penultimate shell or the second shell of that element that becomes the outermost shell for that ion. So usually cations are smaller than the original atom. Anions on the other hand are negatively charged ions, atoms which have gained electrons in their outermost shell. As a result of which the number of protons in the nucleus remains the same but the additional electrons have to be attracted by the same positive charge Therefore, each electron experiences slightly lesser of the attraction by the nucleus and hence the anion is usually larger than the neutral atom. And generally considering that anions are uh, larger and cations are usually smaller because they are formed usually by the loss of a shell. So we assume that the anion which is larger would occupy the lattice sites in a, in a closed pack structure it would occupy the lattice sites and the cations they do not occupy with whatever lattice it may be hcp it may be face centered cubic it may be body centered cubic but all those lattice sites are occupied by the larger ion that is the anion and the smaller cations they usually occupy the voids now if the voids are if the uh, the cation is very very small it can easily go into the tetrahedral void as you remember a tetrahedral void is smaller in size and an octahedral void is larger in size so as i and also i showed you that nature does not permit a very loose packed structure in solids it likes a compact structure therefore if the cation is really small it would prefer to go into the tetrahedral void but if the cation is slightly larger than the, than the circumference or the uh, area that is present in a tetrahedral void, then it would go into the larger void that is the octahedral void. If we know the ratio of the two, that ratio can help us to find out the formula of the compound. So the smaller ions, that is usually cations, uh, in ionic solids, bigger ions, which are usually anions, they form close packed structure and smaller, smaller ions, which are usually cations, they occupy the voids. If the, the cation is small, really small, it occupies tetrahedral void. If it is slightly larger, then it occupies the octahedral void. And these cations do not occupy all the voids. They occupy only some percentage of the voids. 
If you know that percentage of the voids and you find out the ratio between them, you get the chemical formula and that ratio will give you an idea of the formula of that particular uh, ionic compound. And the ratio gives us the molecular formula. So let us solve these two solved examples of your textbook. These, the first one is question 1.1 of your textbook. And the question reads that a compound is formed by two elements X and Y. Atoms of the anion Y form the CCP structure and the cation X occupy all the octahedral voids. What is the formula of the compound? Do you remember? I told you that whatever is the number of atoms, the octahedral voids are always equal to the number of atoms that are forming the CCP or HCP structure, the close band structure. And the tetrahedral voids are twice the number of atoms. So if I imagine this to be a unit cell where all the corners of the unit cell are being occupied by uh, atoms, then each corner, the atom at each corner is present, only one eighth of that is present in this room. And you have eight corners. So if you have eight corners, one eighth of eight, that is one eight into eight would be, you will have one atom, a contribution of one atom in the unit cell. So if you have that one atom in the unit cell, then what is the number now one is the number of the uh, uh, and let us say that these are being occupied these points are being occupied by the compound which is um, in which uh, y is occupying all the corners so if y is one then what would be the number of x x is occupying all the octahedral voids and octahed if there is one atom then number of voids should also be of octahedral voids should be one and if there is one atom in the unit cell, the number of tetrahedral voids should be two, right? So we will say, knowing that ratio, let us write down now x here, sorry, y is equal to, y is equal to one, let us say, then x would is occupying all the octahedral voids, which is always, since octahedral voids is equal to the number of atoms of, um, a number of atoms in the unit cell, Therefore, and the X, that is, X is occupying all the octahedral voids. Therefore, this would also be equal to 1. The ratio of X and Y would be 1 is to 1. So, what will be the formula of this compound? It would be X, Y. Right? This is the next question now. Atoms of element B form HCP lattice. And A occupy two-thirds of the tetrahedral voids. Atoms of element B are forming the HCP lattice. So B is the anion, right? And A and B are, should be the compound. We need to know the substance. So atoms of B form the HCP lattice. So let us say that B is equal to 1. Like we assumed Y is, was equal to 1. And A occupies 2, 3 of the tetrahedral voids. If B is 1, the total number of tetrahedral voids, total number of tetrahedral voids, voids should be equal to 2, right? Because tetrahedral voids are twice the number of atoms, number of, uh, total number of atoms. So if total number of atoms of B is 1, total number of tetrahedral voids is 2. And we are told that A is occupying only two thirds of the tetrahedral voids. And tetrahedral voids are two. So B is one. B is one. And what about A? A should have been two. That is, there are twice the amount of tetrahedral voids, out of which only two thirds is occupied. So this will give us the ratio between A and B. In order to have the ratio between A and B, this becomes A is 4 by 3 is to B is 1. Multiply both sides by 3 you, because you need a whole number ratio. You will get A to be 4, the 3, 3 cancel out, and B is 3. So what will be the formula of the compound then? A would be 4 and B would be 3. A4, B3 should be the formula of the compound. Right? Let us solve one more problem of the exercise of this chapter before I conclude this talk. This is question 12 of your NCRT textbook exercise. The question reads that a cubic solid is made up of two elements P and Q. Atoms of Q are at the corners of the cube 
and P is at the body center. What is the formula of the compound and what are the coordination numbers of P and Q? The cubic solid, it's a cube like the room, and atoms of Q are at the corners of the cube. So Q is occupying all the corners. So for Q, what is the number, total number of Q? The total number of Q, there are eight corners and each atom at each corner is present only one eighth in a unit cell. So one upon eighth is the contribution of each atom. And there are eight corners, so there are eight atoms. So for a unit cell, what is the total number of atoms of Q? You have one. So in order to find out the ratio, we find that Q is one per unit cell. And what about P? P is present at the body center. And you remember, if there are eight atoms on the corners of a cube, P is present as a body center, like it is in the, uh, it's one ball in the center of the room. Now this ball belongs completely to this room. So body center, anything that is at the body center, what is its contribution in a unit cell? We did this in the previous video. Its contribution in the unit cell is one. So there is one and it is present in the whole unit cell. So the contribution is one. So what is the ratio between the two, between P and Q? So the ratio between P is to Q would be equal to one is to one. Therefore the formula of the compound would be P Q. Now what is the other part of the question? What are the coordination numbers of P and Q? Now, if you see this, this is the cube. And there's a ball at every corner. And the ball in the center, if I made these larger, you know, the ball in the center of the room would be touching the tips or touching the balls at every corner which is coming. So the ball in the center is touching how many atoms? There are eight balls on the eight corners and all of them are touching the ball in the center. Therefore, the coordination number of that ball in the body center is eight, right? The coordination number, so which is the ball in the center of the room? It is, what is the formula? P is in the body center. So P has a coordination number of eight. And what about Q? Q are the atoms which are present on the corners of the cube. And each atom on the corner of the cube is directly in contact with one atom in the body center here. And see, each corner is equally divided between eight rooms. Do you remember that? Each corner is equally divided. Now, since there's a ball in the center which is touching all of these, these balls may not exactly be touching each other. One is present here, one is present here. The ball in the center is touching all eight, but these in the corners are not touching each other. So, but that ball in one corner has is being shared by eight rooms. This room, that room, the room in front, the room there. Then the four rooms on top, across that corner also. So that ball is actually touching the body centered ball of eight rooms. So the coordination number of that ball also is eight. So coordination number of both the atoms, that is both the elements would be eight in this arrangement. So with this, I hope it helped you understand the concept, how we can deduce the formula of a compound based on uh, the ratio. If we know the ratio between the cation and the anion, you can deduce the formula. And if you know the structure and which voids are they occupying, it is possible for you to deduce that minimum ratio and get to the formula of the compound. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.